from No matter where you're going Here's a place where you can take Comfort in the knowing That whether if you come to stay a while Or just passing through This door is open to you Come and let's be silent Come and share a hug Come, let's play together. Come, love and be loved. From the blessed out to the turned out, from the pampered to the abused, this door is open to you. Come on in. good to see all of you live and in person and hello to those of you who are watching online today we are so grateful to be together in person and through the ethers always feels good to connect with our spiritual community as usual we've had a very busy and fun weekend here at unity renaissance yesterday we had our annual pet blessing gives you a little idea what was going on a lot of dogs one photo of a cat, <laughs> but it was a great time, such a sweet time to appreciate our pets. If you weren't able to make it to the pet blessing yesterday, I just encourage you to give your own pet a little extra love when you get home, if you're a pet owner, or perhaps if you had a pet in the past, just take a moment to appreciate 
that sweet little animal that blessed your life in times gone by. I also want to just give a little reminder as we start our service today. We do have a policy in place right now at Unity Renaissance following the CDC guidelines. You are required to wear a mask when you are in the building. Uh, the only time we don't wear them or I don't wear mine is when I'm speaking and also when the uh, music team is singing. They lower their mask, but we keep them on other than that. Please also remember to cover your nose and your mouth. I know you've been told this a million times, but I'm just reminding you again today. And all these, uh, this, this protocol applies whether you have been vaccinated or not. Uh, let's all do the right thing here, band together, and we're going to get through this. So thank you so much for your support and cooperation. Well, unity is a positive path for spiritual living. We follow the teachings and the example of our way shower, Jesus, in seeking to more fully love ourselves, love God, and love one another. It's all about love. From that beautiful consciousness of love here at Unity, we honor all paths to God, all names for God, and all expressions of God. And each and every one of you, and each and every one of you, is an expression of God. We are spirit having a human experience. When we know that, when we tune in to our own innate divinity, when we tune in to the presence of spirit within us, connect with it and behold it in one another, that beautiful light just grows and grows within us and it shines out to brighten up the world. Our vision at Unity Renaissance is together, a spiritually awakened world, living in peace, love, and joy. And we are manifesting that vision through our mission, which is together, we transform lives that transform the world. Let's begin our time of transformation this morning in prayer. I invite you to close your eyes, get comfortable in your seat, wherever you may be this morning. Know that you are a part of the service by divine appointment. So we just breathe in, <sighs> release and let go into God, sweet spirit. We are so grateful to be together on this Sunday morning. We are grateful to feel the connections between us, whether here in this room or across the miles. We are grateful for the love that fills our lives. We're grateful for the opportunity to be of service to that which we love. We're so grateful for this community, for all those who serve here with such joy and devotion. And we know that truly the best times are coming for Unity Renaissance. We feel that in our hearts. We see it unfolding before our very eyes. And for all of this and for the opportunity to be a part of it and help make it manifest, we are so grateful. And we say together, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Did y'all know that everything you need to know about what lies before you is available to you through the mind of God, which is you? If you didn't know that, we're going to sing it. Let's stand. Get your reggae on. Everything that I need to know about what lies before me. Everything that I need to know about what lies before me is available to me. Is available to me through the mind of God within me. Everything that I need to know about what lies before me, everything that I need to know about what lies before me is available to me, is available to me through the mind of God within me. Everything I need to be strong. Everything that I need to be strong about what lies before me, everything that I need to be strong about what lies before me is available to me is available to me through the mind of god within me everything that i need to be at peace 
about what lies before me, everything that I need to be at peace. About what lies before me is available to me, is available to me through the mind of God within me. Now from that place of peace and strength and love within you, I invite you to join me in our divinity salute as we turn to greet our neighbor with a bow together. The divine in me greets the divine in you. And we serve and celebrate together for the glory of God. Here we go. Everything that I need to know about what lies before me, everything that I need to know about what lies before me is available to me, is available to me through the mind of God within me, through the mind of God within me, through the mind of God within me. Good job. Give yourself a hand. Good morning. I'm Paul Mitchum, and I'll be your platform host for today. It's been a while since I've been a platform host. Um, today's word is joy. Thank God for joy, right? Thank God for joy. Um, we, we always say something here about rejoice, rejoice. Um, so thank God for rejoicing. And there's a formula out there just that if you... Rejoice and sing joyful songs like we've been singing and say joyful things to each other like we are divine and you are divine. Then if you do that over and over and keep repeating it, by the end of that period, you will have gladness in your heart. And I know that's true, and I verified this formula because um, I read it on the Internet. That's one thing. <laughs> and also read it in the Bible. And it's also in our daily word. So please join me in reading our affirmation. Together, a growing awareness of God's presence is my greatest joy. Awakening from a restful sleep, I give thanks for the new day and all the people who will be part of it. Although I cannot know what happens as this day unfolds, I remind myself that everything and everyone might lead me to a deeper awareness of God. This growing awareness is my greatest joy, even if the day includes less than happy experiences, I will know the quiet joy and comfort, comforting strength of the peaceful presence of God that is with me always. I will rejoice today in being alive, able to think, to feel, to appreciate the sights, the sounds, and the aromas that fill my environment. I will discover joy anew as I recognize each person. That I meet today as a unique expression of the wonder of God. Our scripture verse is from the 118th Psalm, 24th verse. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So uh, comfort and joy are also brought to, brought to us by prayer. And so if you would like prayer support today, we have prayer chaplains available to you. Ann and Deb are prayer chaplains today. If you'd stand, Ann and Deb, uh, stand up. And um, uh, Deb is our, also our prayer chaplain. Um, 
Uh, they will be available to pray with you in the chapel after the service. You may also fill out a prayer request form in the North X or uh, submit your prayer request through our website. And now, please join us in the Lord's Psalm. it all unfold and let this joyful feeling come from deep inside and lift my spirit closer to the light Surrender to the highs and lows And to the pull of the moon And the ebb and flow I am lost in the stillness Of a silent prayer Just a movement of breath and a heartbeat there
let the peaceful waters tumble down my soul let me live in this moment and watch it all unfold and let this joyful feeling come from deep inside and lift my spirit closer to the light oh i'm letting go I'm a sports fan, thanks to my dad. At various times in my life, I have been an avid fan of the LA Lakers, the Chicago Cubs, the Atlanta Braves, the Portland Trailblazers, the Kansas City Royals, and most currently, the Seattle Seahawks, and especially the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> like most <laughs> Like most sports fans, I can get very worked up rooting for my team. And when they win, I'm jubilant. And when they lose, ah, oh, I feel it. So last February, when the Kansas City Chiefs suffered a crushing loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the Super Bowl, I was so upset afterwards, I couldn't even talk about it. <laughs> but then I remembered something. My friend Jess Downey, had texted me, just as one of my texting buddies, I have my texting buddies during football games, they include Jess, and to Michael, Tony Porton, and my son Ben, and Richard if he's out of town. Um, the, in 2018, Jess Downey texted me a message right after the Kansas City Chiefs had lost the game that they needed to win in order to get into the Super Bowl. So basically they, they blew it and their season was over. And I was feeling very down, and Jess texted me two words next year, and an exclamation point. And immediately I felt better, <laughs> right? And I learned from that experience two valuable lessons, not only for sports, but for life in general. And the first one is that the faster we let go of our attachment to what could have or should have been, the less we suffer. And the second lesson is the way to let go of that attachment to what could have or should have been or what should be is to shift our perspective, right? To, to broaden our view. We might also say to shift our consciousness. But it really is like a, taking a bigger picture view. It's kind of like opening up the lens of a camera. And the tight in view is, oh, we lost the Super Bowl. The bigger view, there's always next year. You see, the key is to remember the bigger picture. This is not easy to do, especially when you're in the thick of something and when you're holding on tight to something. There is an art to non-attachment. You see, on the one thing, we want to be attached to some things. We want to be attached to our purpose. We want to be attached to our family and friends, to our spiritual community to the values that give our lives meaning. But at the same time, we must be non-attached. Non-attached. We must be able to let go. Why? Because circumstances are constantly changing. Because we don't always have things turn out the way we would like, or the way we had planned, or the way we would wish. We're not always right. We don't always win, and life just keeps flowing along. Life is a flow, and we must flow with it. 
You see, any time we start clinging to uh, an attachment, whatever it may be, whenever we start clinging, we basically block the flow of good into our own lives. And so to get back in the flow, we must release. We must unattach. Now, non-attachment is not the same as detachment. So detachment really implies a certain aloofness right, a a certain sort of disengagement. We think of somebody who is um, not engaged in this way, of being not really caring, not really being compassionate. They are detached. But non-attachment is very different. Non-attachment says that we can care very deeply. We can be very connected to people and situations in our lives and at the same time be able to let them go when we need to. How do we know when it's time? How do we know when we need to let go of something? Very simple. When holding on to it is causing us pain. So I learned a big lesson about this in 2008 from, of all people, Deepak Chopra. Does everyone know who Deepak Chopra is? Great, I wasn't sure about you young folks over here. It's kind of a big name in the spiritual circles. Well, in 2008, I initiated and directed a project in which we were filming a unity minister. Her name is Reverend Wendy Craig Purcell. She's the founding minister of the Unity Center in San Diego. We were going to film her interviewing Deepak Chopra for a six-part series on topics such as God and Jesus, uh, spiritual principles, and higher consciousness. It was very exciting. I was super excited about this, so I got all the parties to sign off on it. And Deepak said, I'm in for whatever you want to do. Great. I worked with Reverend Wendy for weeks, planning what the format would be, what the segments would be, what questions she would ask Deepak, et cetera. She did a ton of research and preparation. Great. Finally, the time comes. We all go to San Diego. Deepak arrives. And he says to me, I think we should change the name of the program. Okay, okay. We hadn't really set the name of the program. I can't remember what name we had, but... It wasn't cast in stone or anything. We talked it through. We came up with the name Jesus and the Awakening to God Consciousness. It's a DVD series. You can get it on Amazon. In any event, I really liked this title. That was great. But then Deepak pulled out of his pocket several pages of notes. And he said, so here are my thoughts on what the format for this can be. And here are the segments. Here's how we can divide it up. And these are some questions I thought Wendy could ask me. Well, this was about an hour and a half before we began filming, and so I began to feel a sense of rising panic. First of all, I was already starstruck, okay, because, I mean, this is Deepak Chopra. I was a little nervous anyway, and now he was wanting to change everything at the last minute. So I went off to Reverend Wendy, and I go, my gosh, what, you know, what do we do? We talked it over, and of course, She had worked very hard to be ready. We decided I would just go back to him and say, you know what, it's really too late to make any changes. So (laughs) I did. So I went back to him, and, and I said that. And then, to my great relief and my continuing edification, he said without a millisecond of hesitation, okay and put all of his notes away. And on we went. I was incredulous. I had never seen anyone turn on a dime like that before. To, to completely let go, of, obviously put a lot of work and thought into it, to just completely let go of those attachments in order to clear the way for us to have an easy and harmonious process. And we did. We went on, we produced a great series, very uplifting, and very successful. So what I realized from that is, yes, he's a spiritual guru, master kind of up here, but we all have that capability in us. We all have the capability to let go of something just that easily, to say, I'm done with this. I'm letting it go and drop it. We all have that ability to, instead of resisting something, to instead of arguing with what is (laughs) and trying to pretend that this isn't the reality, that we actually accept what is. So instead of saying, oh, not this, 
something else, not this. Why this? Instead of going through all those imaginations, we just say, ah, now this. Now what? Now what? So we can go on. You know, COVID has given us many opportunities to practice non-attachment, hasn't it? More opportunities than we ever wanted. In 2020 especially, we had to let go of so much. It's kind of mind-boggling now that we think about it, isn't it, all that we let go of in 2020? There were simple freedoms, simple things we were accustomed to, like being able to walk around without wearing a mask, like being able to be with our family and friends whenever we wanted, being able to hug each other. We had to let go of these plans and events and activities and gatherings we had our hearts set on as one after another after another were canceled or, po or postponed. We got through it. And for those of us working on our spiritual practices during that time, we may not even realize how we got through it because at least in part, we shifted our consciousness, right? We looked at, we sought to see things differently. We realized that yes, we had lost so much, but there was still so much to be grateful for. We were grateful for love, for connection, for nature, for God, for each other turned our attention to the things that can never be taken away from us. And we also elevated our consciousness by reminding ourselves of the truest words ever spoken. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. Say it with me. This too shall pass. Yes. Absolutely true. Everything comes and goes. Everything arises and passes. It is the flow of life, the ever-changing flow of life. You know, this is a central concept in Buddhism. How many of you are familiar with Buddhism? It's very central to Buddhism. It is said that, the, that Siddhartha Gautama actually became the Buddha when he realized that people suffered when they insisted on permanent, unchanging states of being in an ever-changing world. Oh, how we cling. Is it not true? We don't want to let go of how it once was or how we thought it was going to be. And in Buddhism, they're very focused on this particular understanding. They emphasize the importance of knowing that everything is, everything in our lives, everything is fleeting and transitory. And you could say, well, that's kind of a depressing thought, isn't it? Like, <laughs> right, it's all going to come and it's all going to go. Not so. You know, knowing that it's only here for a time can actually deepen our connection with it. We learn to live in the now. We learn to appreciate the magnificence of what is present in our lives today. And in Buddhism, they say to, to do all of this, to enjoy your connections, to enjoy your life, your accomplishments, your possessions, your friends, your family. Enjoy all of it, but at the same time, hold that remembering that all is impermanent. And in doing so, knowing this, we can live without fearing loss, they say. We can live without experiencing the pain and the longing that come from wanting what has been. So one of the most, truly one of the most powerful demonstrations of these Buddhist concepts, this idea of staying in the flow, of being willing to connect deeply and then let go, is the creation of sand mandalas by Tibetan Buddhist monks. Has anyone ever seen sand mandalas by Tibetan Buddhist monks? The groups of monks, I'm not quite ready for that one yet, these groups of monks uh, go around the, the world and they go into dis different spiritual communities. Richard and I saw them at Unity Temple on the Plaza in Kansas City. And they go in and they create these gorgeous sacred mandalas. Now mandala is, simply means circle, it's a Sanskrit word for circle. And now I'm ready. So the monks use a variety of colored grains of sand to create a graphic and a symbolic pattern in a circle. 
it takes millions of grains of sand to make a mandala that's about the size of this one, five feet by five feet square. The monks bend over like that. You can see them working there for hours on end, dropping grain after grain of sand into these very precise and complex patterns. It is said that they trained for years in order to be able to do this. And I think part of that training must be back exercises. <laughs> you gotta strengthen your back and you gotta you gotta <laughs> you gotta make a commitment to never say it loud. Oh my aching back. <laughs> but here's how it looks when they're actually doing this work. They work in silence, they're bent over, and they're gently scraping these small metal tubes and funnels to apply the sand. It's laborious, methodical, precise, and stunning. Each mandala can take up to five days to complete, working all throughout the day. But the most important message from this exercise comes when the mandala is completed. Because when the monks are finished, they pray over the mandala, and then they destroy it. They sweep up all the sand, they give handfuls of it to people who come to the closing ceremony as sort of a remembrance. They take the rest of the colored sand and they put it into an urn, and then they take it to the nearest living stream, flowing water, where they gently pour it in, symbolizing impermanence and letting go. They release the sand into the great flow of life to bless the whole world. What an incredible metaphor for life, is it not? To pour everything into it, these actions, these experiences of exquisite beauty, but also to know that all is impermanent and to be willing to release. It's a reminder to deeply savor now, to appreciate life knowing that it is ephemeral. You know, we need this kind of perspective, this higher consciousness particularly, when we are faced with the hardest letting go of all, letting go of the people we love. And perhaps they've just moved on and, and living elsewhere, a relationship has ended, maybe we don't connect with them going forward in this life, or perhaps they are nearing the end of their earthly life, or maybe they have completed their earthly journey and made their transition. It can be excruciatingly difficult to let go of people we love. When my mother was in hospice, my sister was determined to keep her alive at all costs. She said to the hospice nurse, please just continuing, continue to feed mom. Just force it in her if you have to. Don't let her sleep too much. Keep giving her positive messages. Keep telling her she's going to be okay. Well, we've all experienced probably that kind of desperation at some point in our lives when we so fervently wanted to stop what was obviously happening. But what helped us, my sister and me, be willing and able to let go was a bigger perspective was the realization that my mother was ready to go, that the kind and loving thing to do was to let her go. A hospice nurse said to me, you know, quite often our loved ones are being called up. They're being called up by spirit, and we are holding on to them by the ankles, trying to keep them here. You see, it's that bigger perspective that can help us let go. And certainly if we're Facing the, lo excuse me, the loss of a loved one, we can remind ourselves that life goes on as we teach in unity beyond these physical bodies, that we're always connected, whether on the physical plane or not, and that, yes, we will meet again. You see, this spiritual perspective, and that's what it is, can help us in the day-to-day -day realities to release. This is spiritual work, spiritual practice of the highest order. It is the most toughest spiritual work that we do. 
And when you think about it, it's why prayer is so important. You know, what is prayer other than shifting our consciousness? Is it not true? We go to God and whatever understanding we have of God, we release our concerns, we open ourselves to insights so that we can see things differently. To let go, we can amp up our prayer practice, our meditation, we can consult spiritual wisdom wherever we find it. We can also lean on the spiritual masters. We can lean, for example, on Jesus. I know that works for many, not for all. Find the one that works for you. But let me share this one passage. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 18 through 20, Jesus says, Come to me, you know this, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What a sense of relief and solace that is when we're trying to release something. And that passage, that particular passage is beautifully interpreted in a Bible translation you may have never heard of, but it's called The Message. <clears throat> And here's how it interprets it. Matthew 11, chapter, chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you in this. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. <sighs> Isn't that what we are most after, living freely and lightly? When we are carrying too much and holding on too tight, we can make a conscious choice to let go. Here are some steps that we can take. Whether we're holding on to a person, a habit, a grudge, a possession, a point of view, or something else. And the first thing, recognize that your continuing attachment is causing you to suffer. This is so big. Look, when my team loses, there's a sting. But when I keep going it over and over, I'm inflicting my own suffering. Same for anything you're remaining attached to that you need to let go of. Second, seek a broader perspective. Connect with God, Jesus, a source of sacred wisdom to help you get out of your limited tunnel thinking into the bigger picture. Third, create and repeat an affirmation to help you practice non-attachment. Here are a few. I let go and let God. I accept every outcome as a path that leads me closer to God. I commit to loving unconditionally, non judgmentally, and without attachment. Wow. Unconditionally, non judgmentally, and without attachment. And finally, deepen your spiritual practice. Pray, meditate, practice gratitude. Find sanctuary in the presence of God within you and know that while all else may come and go, this presence of God within you, this presence of love, it never leaves you. Yeah, it never goes. It's the essence of who you are. Lo, I am with you. turn now to our meditation. I want you to get comfortable in your seat. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Releasing and letting go. Appreciating for a moment that this is the mastery of non-attachment to breathe in and to let go. Allow yourself to relax into this present moment. Breathe into any place of tension within you and feel it release. 
like that all. Let, uh, let go of whatever you are holding on to and whatever is holding on to you. Imagine for a moment that this is your day of liberation. This is your day to put aside whatever has been weighing you down and be free. I invite you in just a few moments of silence to call into your own mind and heart whatever you most fervently want to release and let go of. And in a moment of silence, imagine just pure release and letting go. See it go by the wayside. See it out of you and out of your life. And you at peace in the silence. give thanks for this great power within us, this divine power to choose what we hold on to and what we let go of, to truly create the path of our own lives, to live in ever greater joy and freedom. We step into that power fully today and see only good things coming forward. And for all of this, we are so grateful. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. is the time in our service for the sharing of our love offering. I invite you to give from that wellspring of gratitude within you, knowing that this is part of being in the flow. This is how we stay in the flow of giving and receiving. I want to thank all of you who tithe so, are so committed to giving to Unity Renaissance. You know what? You're the foundation of all that we do here with your generosity, and I'm so, so grateful. And I know that you know, as I do through tithing, that everything we give comes right back to us increased and multiplied. Well, there are many ways to give to Unity Renaissance. You can check them all out on our website. The easiest way and the one we encourage for your simplicity and ours is to use your smartphone. You simply text the word give and thereafter the amount you wish to contribute to. 540-418-1228. Text now. And while you're preparing your gift, it is my great joy to welcome up our board president, Valerie Winters, and Gavin, I forgot Gavin's last name, Chesney, Gavin Chesney, uh, to share a very special message with you today. Good morning. Okay. Um, as she said, I'm your board president. This is Gavin. Okay, some of you have had a chance to meet him, some of you have heard me bragging about him. <laughs> okay, um, We have a lot to be proud of this over the last couple of years. We've made it through the worst of COVID. Our expansion is complete. If you haven't had a chance to go through there and see it, please do. 
and it's beautiful. We're making more and more use of our expansion every day, the additional spaces. We've rented it out to a couple of churches that needed homes. We have classes, Tai Chi, yoga. We've had some weddings there. Um, Holly has helped us um, do some fake weddings to advertise our space, and she's got it up on our website, and she's putting it out there so we can try to bring in some more rentals. Um, over the next several weeks, you're going to hear us say this, this phrase, let's finish strong. You may have noticed there is a poster out front that's about six feet tall that shows you the thermometer. And that, that is a reminder to us to finish strong because we've got a few pledges that are outstanding out there, and we just want to make sure that over the next few months that we bring those in and finish out the year strong and finish out our Turning Point campaign. And of course, we welcome any additional gifts for those of you who have already met your pledge. And if you've seen the facility, you feel, you feel driven to give more, or if you never even made a pledge. Three years ago, we came together as a community because we wanted to do this for ourselves, for our children, and for our future. Together, we pledged $557,000. That was after we had already done a campaign to do this beautiful sanctuary which Tom Melzoni, who is our consultant for the capital campaign, told us that was unprecedented to have a church do a one capital campaign and another one immediately after that and bring in so much money. He was impressed. Let's do our very best to reach that goal of 557. The thermometer in the narthex will tell you week by week where we stand in relation to reaching our goal. Let's complete what we started. Thank you so much for your love, support, and generosity. Here's Tony Porton, co-chair of the Turning Point campaign, and some of our children to remind you what this is really all about. Thank you. Hello, this is Tony Porton. Um, I'm speaking to you today as uh, a member of Unity Renaissance, a member of the Board of Trustees, one of your treasurers at Unity Renaissance, and also as a co-chair of the Turning Point campaign. Um, my bride, Lisa, and I were both delighted to be uh, co-chairs on this effort. We'd like to talk with you today about um, what we're doing to wind this campaign up. Uh, our initiative is going to be called Finish Strong and throughout this campaign my emphasis was always on our children and the ability to perpetuate through the years um, what unity is and what it means and continue our mission and vision statements through our children. Um, my experience with this as a youth, I was uh, uh, president of our youth group at First Christian Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and I was always kind of given the back seat on things when we were successfully growing the youth in the church. Um, certain ministers weren't right, certain this wasn't right. And that church today is closed. I've always visited when I went home, uh, fond memories other than this. And that's why I really emphasize um, our youth. And with that, I'd like to uh, reintroduce what you've already seen during the campaign. And that's what our youths have to say about this. So thank you. My name is Maya Porton and I'm here today to introduce the Capital Campaign Kids video. I've been coming to Unity since I was about 10 years old, but I definitely didn't appreciate the environment we have here until I was about 13 when I was going into the YOU. There I've met some of the best friends I've ever made in my entire life. We've done things like go to rally together and bake cookies and sell and wash cars. And I think part of the reason that we're all so close is because of the crowded room we're in. People invite their friends all the time, but there's nowhere to put them. We have people sitting on couches, on the floor, sitting on each other, basically all the room we can get. The remodel is so important to us because I think we're finally going to have enough room for the amount of people that have started coming as our new generation has come into the YOU. This remodel is definitely for the people who currently attend here, but I think more importantly, it's for the future. It's for our kids that are going to be moving up into Uniteens and YOU, and it's for those of us who are about to graduate. I hope you enjoy the rest of this video, and thank you for having me. 
we are in need of a bigger nursery. The more children we have, the less space we have. And this right here is Tommy. And Tommy would like everyone to know that we would love to have a new nursery. Isn't that right, Tommy? Supply open closet. This entire wall serves everything from our nursery to the pre K, all the way up to elementary, unit teens, and the YOU. Go over here. This is right now, this is the space we have for our classroom. This is our office. This is the office of the youth education department. And we're making use of additional space here to, this is where our uh, donated um, backpacks are stocked in the meantime. This is where our supplies are stocked in the meantime for projects that we have going out to the church. We use that. We have a shelving system that we have here. <laughs> Pretty much, this is it. And right over here, this is what the, the children use as our open board and what they use on a daily basis. Every Sunday when they come in for youth education. This is room three. This serves BK all the way up to first room. Uh, today is our Why Are You uh, Car Wash for Rally. Yes, so we're raising money to go to Rally, which is a um, youth group event that all the churches on the East Coast we come together and have an amazing time for a weekend. And so our rally is actually in two weekends. So we're getting ready to um, go up to Maryland and have an amazing time of a rally. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. We are outside in what we know is going to be the size of our new classroom. And we can do more activities inside and it's just going to be a lot more fun. I'm excited because in our new classroom, there are going to be more books. Because we have um, more space to build stuff, make a bigger prayer circle. Thank you for space for all our drawing. Thank you for space for all of our activities and games. Thank you! what we've done together. Oh my gosh. It's amazing. It's amazing. Oof. Wow. So the kids have really grown, haven't they? <laughs> so just so you know, um, those of you who have uh, a balance remaining on your pledge, what you pledged to the capital campaign, you'll be re receiving a letter within about a week or so that'll show you the amount that you pledged, the amount you've given to date. And uh, of course, we are blessing and appreciating whatever you can do to help fulfill that pledge. Um, if you would like to make a donation to the capital campaign, whether you're fulfilling a pledge or not, you can designate on your check that it's for Turning Point. Uh, we have a drop down on our app. When you go to give, it can drop down and shows capital campaign on there. Uh, you can certainly visit with Paul, our wonderful business manager, Paul Mitchum, uh, to find out whatever else you can do. But uh, we're going to do this, right? We're going to do this. We're going to finish strong. And starting in 2022, for the first time in six years, we will not have a capital campaign in progress. So that's going to feel pretty good, isn't it? We'll have a mortgage, but we won't have a capital campaign in progress. So thank you all so much for your love and generosity. Those of you who are here today, if you wish to give via check to either Operation uh, or to the Turning Point campaign, we have a love offering basket in the back. And with that, I invite you to hold your gift in your hand, and let's bless it with our offertory blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Give and it's given back to you. Give and it's given back to you. Give and it's given back to you. Press down, shaken together, running over, back in good measure.
When you lay down your head, you want to sleep at night. But you're wide-eyed and worrying heavy on the state of your life. Just let go, let go, let go, leave it by the side of the pillow. time in our service when we welcome those who are new to Unity Renaissance. If you're here today for the first, second, or third time, we invite you to raise your hand nice and high, holding up the appropriate number of fingers. We have a whole beautiful row here. Look at these guys. Ooh. Hold up one if it's your first time, two for your second time, three for your third. Keep your hands up till they come around. Uh, Donna, we got a whole row full over here. We're so happy to have you with us. Got to hear more about you guys. Thank you for joining us today. There's some goodies in there for you to take home. Anybody over on this side? I guess we're all over on this side today. Well, welcome. We look forward to welcome. seeing you all again and again. Um, we have something super exciting starting this week, a fabulous, mind-blowing class uh, being taught by Christopher Naughton with some special guests to tell us all about it. We're going to invite Christopher to come on up for just a few minutes and give us the scoop. Hey folks, uh, just a couple of things. Uh, class does start this Wednesday. Um, the German philosopher 
Arthur Schopenhauer said that truth goes through three stages. One, it's ridiculed. Secondly, it's violently opposed. And third, it's approved as being self-evident. That's the nature of consciousness today in the study of consciousness. And I know that's a big word, but honestly, this is the next frontier. And we have four and probably five amazing guests who are, are at the very forefront of doing the research and the examination of everything in our lives, everything we think of, all the psi phenomena, all the telepathy, near-death experiences, out-of-body experiences, the life review. We're going to cover that in the class this week with these, again, these four amazing guests who are going to be joining us by Zoom. We'll do it here in person, and we'll do it by Zoom. There are two books we're recommending. You don't have to buy them because we're going to send out a free syllabus uh, every single week and let you know where to get that on the, on the website. But The One Mind by Larry Dossi is an extraordinary book, and so is this book, Living in a Mindful Universe by Eben Alexander, who wrote the book Proof of Heaven. He'll be joining us for the first class this Wednesday. If you have questions, you want to sign up, Alicia and I will be at the back table right after service. Thanks. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Um, we are having a uh, supply drive for released women uh, who are re-entering society from today until the end of October, October 31st. Starting today, we are collecting toiletries for women who have been released from incarceration at Norfolk Jail and are re-entering society. Regular sizes of soap, deodorant, washcloths, toothpaste, toothbrushes, shampoo, and conditioner will be greatly appreciated. Uh, please bring your donations to the church on Sunday, or you can drop them off during our regular church hours, uh, Tuesday through Thursday. Thank you in advance for your generous support for this great program in assisting these women. Makes a huge difference. We have some collection uh, baskets out there in the narthex for that. Hey, coming up next Saturday, I think it's going to be an amazing seminar taught by Dr. Janine Leck. She's a holistic health practitioner, a chiropractor as well. She's going to teach us how to keep ourselves in alignment between chiropractic adjustments or even if we never get chiropractic adjustments, but how to basically self-adjust. That's going to be at 10 a.m. this Saturday. It's one hour long. We'll learn how to keep ourselves in spinal alignment and in the process, reduce pain, discomfort and I would add inflammation. So wear comfortable clothing, bring a towel or a mat. We're asking a $15 suggested uh, love offering, but no one will be turned away. Dr. Lex is brilliant. She knows her stuff, and she has made a huge difference in our lives. Uh, so I hope you come and check that out on Saturday. Next Sunday, I'll be talking about the five golden doors, which are really the keys, keys to open up greater prosperity and abundance in our lives. And there are five doors based on what we choose to believe. So I hope you'll join us next Sunday for that. And now let's welcome in our children. We are walking in the light of God. 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 Light of God, we are walking, walking, we are walking, walking, we are walking in the light of God. Light of God, we are walking, walking, we are walking, walking, we are walking in the light of God. 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 Is that one better? Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Hey, you guys. Hello. Hey, Paul. Excuse me. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'd like to read a uh, word of scripture from the Bible. Let the elders What's who happening? rule well <laughs> be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. 1 Timothy 5.17. October is Pastor Appreciation Month. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> When did and, that happen? <laughs> and it's been kind of an idea. informal tradition. Um, it started in, in the 1990s where, where they uh, went from kind of a month 
down to uh, Pastor Appreciation Day, and that's the second Sunday in October, which is today. Aww. So we're here. So we're going to stop here and appreciate you. Oh, how you've sweet done. are you? So, thank you. So from the staff and from myself, I'm going to say thank you for praying for us. Aww. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for keeping us going when we're down and celebrating when we're up. Thank you, Reverend Paula. And I, I'm going to bring forward uh, uh, Christopher oh, and Beth. <laughs> look at this. Oh, thanks. Got you guys. <laughs> this is sweet. That's a beautiful orchid oh, to replace thanks. the one in your office. Oh, thanks, from the guys. music team. <laughs> wow. Paula, we just want to let you know that we love you so much. You've meant so much to all of us. Your consciousness <laughs> and your star shines as bright as any in the firmament. Thank, thank you. you. We thank love you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh. Again, thank you, Paula. The board appreciates you. The congregation appreciates you. The kids appreciate you. Lisa? Good heavens. <laughs> That's a lot. Jeremiah? Uh, this for Reverend Paula. And we, just wanted, uh, we just wanted to thank you for everything and, like, for the classroom and and everything, just everything that's in the meeting. <laughs> oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, look at that. Let's all stand now and give uh, Reverend Paula our Christ blessing. Yes. We love you. We appreciate Aww. you. <laughs> we behold the Christ you are. Ready together? We Reverend love Paula. you. We yeah. appreciate you. you. We, we appreciate you. you. <laughs> and we behold the Christ, Christ in you. Thank you. Wow, what a surprise. Thank you. I'm, I'm floored. <laughs> I had no idea. My goodness. You know, um, yeah, <laughs> already gave a sermon. <laughs> you know, it's a labor of love. You know that. I love all of you and all of you. What we're creating together, what we've done already is magnificent, but even more amazing things are to come. And it's because of who we are together. So thank you for the honor, truly the deep honor of serving you. Kids, do we have anything we want to add here? Are we ready? To, okay. Appreciate the masks on. Yes. You just keep it up now when you talk. I, I was amiss last time. I'm sorry, dear. My fault. It's okay if you're different this fall, your heart. It's okay if you're different. Just follow your heart. Woo! We, we learned about how we, we can connect to other things. We learned how we can connect to other things. To everything. That's beautiful. Love it. Boy, you guys are learning some big, important ideas. All right. Let's stand together now and join in our prayer for protection, followed by our peace song. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Let this be my joyous mind. 